Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to micromoney.com Q2 FY24 results conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Abhishek Banerjee. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, on behalf of ICICI Securities, I would like to welcome you to the Q2 FI24 earnings conference call of matrimony.com. Uh, from the company, we have Mr. Murugavil Jankiraman, MD and CEO, and Mr. Shushant Pai, the CFO. Over to Mr. Murugavil for his opening remarks. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Abhishek Banerjee. Good evening, everyone. Wishing you all a very happy Diwali. Despite uh, quarter two being a seasonal quarter, to achieve the 7.8 percentage year on year growth on matchmaking building, uh, this was in line with uh, what we are indicated during the quarter one call. In quarter two, on a consolidated basis, we achieved a building of rupees 117.1 crores. A decline of 6 percentage over previous quarter and a growth of 7.3 percentage year on year. Revenue of 121.6 crore, a decline of 1.4 percentage over previous quarter and growth of 5.9 percentage year on year. The key highlights for the matchmaking business are as follows. Billing for the quarter was rupees 114.9 crore. A decline of 6% over the previous quarter and growth of 1.8% year on year. Revenue was at uh, rupees 119.2 crore, which was a decline of 1.1% over the previous quarter and growth of 6% year on year. We have added 2.6 lakh page subscription during the quarter, which was a decline of 7% over the previous quarter and growth of 7.4% year on year. The average transaction value for matching business increased by 1.2 percent over previous quarter and 0.4 percent year on year. This was in line with our customer acquisition strategy. I'm also happy to share that we have launched a new version of Bharat Matrimony app and website uh, to delivering an enhanced user experience and functionality. We also enhanced the ability to connect with matches over shared interests such as lifestyle hobbies. Okay. So we can find matches based on objects and interests. We expect the initiative to add further value to our customers. Now coming to the marriage services business, revenue was 2.4 crores, a decline of 10% over the previous quarter, and growth of 1.6 per year on year. We've been working towards driving the uh, working towards uh, achieving the break-even or profitability. So we are taking steps to make that happen. So EBITDA loss for the quarter was 2.1 crores, a down of 3.2. Uh, which is uh, uh, down uh, from 3.1 crore over the previous quarter. On the building and revenue outlook for quarter three, matching revenue year on year growth is expected to be a similar level uh, as compared to quarter two. On wedding services, revenue losses are expected to be a similar level as Q2. Let me now pass on to Susan to comment on the key profitability idea. Susan, over. <laughs> Uh, thanks, uh, Murga. Our EBITDA margin for the matchmaking business in Q2 is at 21.3% as compared to 24.1% in Q1 and 23.1% a year ago. Marketing expenses are at 46 crore uh, as compared to rupees 43 crore in quarter one. In this quarter, the provision for the disputed Google service fee is for the full quarter. However, in quarter one, it was only for two months. Along with some increase in marketing, this was the main reason for the decline in EBITDA margins in matchmaking business. Excluding marketing expenses, our margins in matchmaking is stable at 60%. On a consolidated basis, our EBITDA margins in Q2 are at 15.1% as compared to 17.2% in quarter one and 16.3% a year ago. Tax rate in the quarter is 24% as compared to 23.2% in quarter one. Profit after tax is at rupees 12.53 crores, a decline of 11.6% quarter on quarter, 
and growth of 7% year on year. Our share of loss from the associates, which is Astrovision, is rupees 1 lakh. Return on capital employed annualized is at about 17% as compared to 21% in quarter 1. Our cash balance is at about Rs. 337 crores. On the outlook for Q3 margin, our profit after tax in quarter 3 is expected to decline slightly on a year-on-year -year basis, mainly due to lower revenue growth and Google service fee provision. Also, just to recollect, in quarter 3 of last year, we had a one-time gain on account of land sale for Rs. 5.8 crores. I would like to end with a customary safe harbor statement. Certain statements during this call could be forward-looking statements on our business. These involve a number of risks and uncertainties that could cause the actual results to differ materially from such forward-looking statements. We do not undertake to update any such forward-looking statement that may be made from time to time by or on behalf of the company unless it is required by law. With this, we can open the floor for Q&A. Over to you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking the question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of cost of Bubina from BMSPL Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, so, you know, I noticed you had put up you had put up a disclosure that you've secured the domain name love.com or something like that for casual dating. So, just wanted to understand uh, where did this mindset change come from to get into casual dating and uh, What's the, I mean, what is the company's plans over here? How much, uh, by when do you start to see uh, user growth in this space? And uh, I mean, when do you really see the scaling? How much money will you invest in it? Do you plan to acquire someone or do you plan to grow this organically? Uh, whatever you can tell us regarding this. Yeah, uh, yeah. thank you. Uh for asking the question. Uh, so basically, we uh, don't want to uh, uh, you know, get into cash flow basis. I just want to uh, get that clarified. We want to get into a serious uh, relationship uh, 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 domain. So because uh, the what you know they kind of figured out was the cash flow data in India, where there are players there in India, in the cash flow data space, there's also players like Tinder and all. They're seen as a frivolous and, uh, and uh, they don't stand for something meaningful. So our ability always been that help people to find the, the meaningful relationship. Well, matrimony is that, you know, that people can come to the matrimony. The intent is very clear. They want to get married. However, we, we, we figured out there are a set of users uh, who want to, you know, you know, fall in love or, you know, want our serious relationship. We believe there is an opportunity in this case. So that's why we bought the domain love.com. They intend to launch the service in the serious place in the space. I think that's what love.com is attempt to do. So it's in line with our uh, ethos and values and uh, helping people to find a life partner. So in terms of investment, uh, you know, the product may be launched uh, in maybe next couple of months. We're working on it. And uh, it's too early to know what the level of investment is going to do. So, so probably maybe next quarter we'll be in the portion to give some comment on that because at this point of time the focus on getting the product right or you to understand how do you want to take the product forward or marketing other strategies. So we not really worked on those aspects yet. Could you at least share if you are gonna grow this organically or you're gonna acquire a company because your competitor for example, I think a few years ago, a year ago, I don't really remember the exact time I've acquired Isle. So, because you know, there's in this space, we had spoken earlier to on a conference, private conference call, where we had discussed that, uh, you know, these 
or homegrown cash serious dating websites or casual dating whatever you want to call them the homegrown ones they just don't have it in them to grow beyond a certain level ui uh, bugs all those issues yeah, taken uh, in a question so i thought about it i know we are not uh, intend to acquire anyone so you know i think that's a sad part that we can't and we just want to because uh, when we are into a serious relationship i don't think uh, anybody in india in that segment i think that's our understanding so so we prefer to build it organic okay excellent thank you so much thank you thank you before we take the next question we would like to remind participants that you may press star and want to ask questions the next question is from the line of anurag purohit from anive pms anurag has dropped off the next question is from the line of ankur jain please go ahead uh, hi good evening uh, thank you for the opportunity i have two questions <clears throat> the first question is on the merit services business so i just wanted to know uh, the progress in that particular segment i mean do you see yourself in a stronger position now to charge subscription from more number of vendors or the mandap mandap owners and what is the timeline for break even that you have in mind that is my first question yeah see the business uh, we are uh, you know working on uh, various front uh, be it on the product side technology front and our uh, value proposition and uh, while you watch how these are integrated we we definitely see that uh, uh, some of the fundamental things to be addressed so while working on this journey of getting some of the fundamental some of the fundamental things right value proposition right to the customers we also taken a step to optimize the cost so we see that the cost is going down so we believe that uh, somewhere in quarter 4 uh, i think not the entire quarter i think somewhere in quarter 4 we believe we can get to the break even on a cash basis or get close to cash basis so so that that's uh, how how we are looking at the business we think that once you get to the break even once you uh, uh, get close to the break even mm-hmm. then uh, probably you are plan to scale this business but at the moment the focus is to optimize the cost get the value process right and, uh, and uh, get to the break even so that so we hope we sometime will happen in next four five months all right yeah thanks and the second question is a little longer question Mm-hmm. Uh, you know it is it is about it is about the telling calling tele calling process in both matchmaking and the wedding services business so uh, see what i have observed in a classified business that you know the moment a potential customer evinces interest by sharing the mobile number there is a mad rush among the vendors to chase the customer and it annoys the customer so one i wanted to know how does that process work in the wedding services business of matrimony like you know if there is a potential customer do they share the mobile number and what happens once they share the mobile number is it is it like disseminated to all the vendors who can call the customer that is one i wanted to know how does that process work and uh, the second question again related to this tele calling hygiene is by the company executives so again in certain classified business uh, there are target which are given to tele uh, you know tele calling executives and once they get the details of a customer they want to uh, up sell some package to that customer and you know they they call the customer on the number of times and somewhere in the google reviews of matrimony i found one review where a customer said that i had requested not to be called because i am i am at work but still uh, you know i get number of calls and that really annoys me so i wanted to know how does the company manage the hygiene when it comes to tele calling uh, where the where the executives are given targets to nurse the customer to buy a particular package but at the same time the delicate balance is managed so that it doesn't annoy the customer so i wanted to know this both for wedding services as well as for matchmaking thank you so yeah, let me uh, you know first talk about wedding service the wedding service uh, when the customer is uh, interested in availing the you know particular service or photography for example yeah, once you understand the customer requirement the leads are sent to only limited number of vendors so not too many vendors again uh, so that is not the customer is annoyed with uh, too many vendors calling oh well uh, the point i made uh, uh, just earlier is you have to understand what customer wants what is the value proposition you want to offer is it the customer just want the phone call from vendor In fact, you are just asking some of the fundamental questions also. I think that's something working on those things. That is for our time. 
So the response is meet the not the customer and the not and too many vendors. Whereas we meet that's where the most of the cat recoveries work. We limit the number of vendors that uh, the leads is sent to. However, you know, we are looking at you know further into it so that the customer is not annoyed with the uh, even uh, customer getting calls to even say four vendors or five photographs. So that's something because sometimes the customer wants uh, you know four vendors also decide because it helps the customer to evaluate pricing and package to decide. However, instead of standard numbers, we are going for a partially we can you know optimize according to the customer requirement. Okay, then my lead one to three vendors or five vendors. This is something something you need to work on it and improve. When it comes to matchmaking, matchmaking definitely is nothing like you know there's a there's a control. It's not that the telecom executives can make unlimited number of calls. We have a you know close to thousand telecallers and uh, we have uh, make good number of calls on daily basis. There's a limit. There's also provision for customer to you know to set uh, be it on the interface. Also, we send the SMS after certain number of calls to give an option for customer to set do not call. The thing that you, one of the review what you mentioned could be one of the such exceptions that probably because could have not happened to telecall it probably could have been some other process there are multiple processes could be in a process failure at one of the calling as far as general calling there no unlimited call the only limited number of call there is a provision is also communicate to the customer to ensure that the customer has a control over whether they want to receive call or not so it's not that the customer at the mercy of or not at the uh, at the receiving end that you know the uh, they they cannot stop the call. However, there are times you know people would you know when the customer are told they are not enable the DMV. I think yeah, when you are dealing with those people, that could have been one or two mistakes here and there. However, you know so so these all uh, the exceptional uh, cases not the norm. Right. Yeah. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. I just wanted to you know know about the hygiene part of telecoding. Thanks a lot for answering this question. Yeah, very important for us because for us the customer experience is paramount. Uh, we want to ensure that customer having a great matchmaking experience. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sonal Minhas from Precinct Investment Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Yes, Sonal. Uh, good ahead. evening, everyone. Uh, sir, just wanted to understand uh, with regard to the revenue guidance which you mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. That for Q3, I think yeah. you mentioned there is a revision in guidance for Q3. Just wanted to understand the subjective part of it. Why? Why is that so? Why were uh, the new billings visibly down? And uh, secondly, uh, what is the outlook for the year uh, as a whole? Uh, assuming Q4 is uh, maybe we can just extend it to Q4 as well. That's the first question. Yeah. So basically, uh, to look at the, the first uh, six months. The growth in matchmaking around the 7.2 percent. So mm -hmm. the quarter Q3 also looked a similar level of growth. While we are taking a steps to uh, move to much better growth, uh, we are still not with the uh, double growth uh, growth yet. You know, we are still hovering around the return of growth. We also expect the Q3 also the similar level of growth in the building or uh, matchmaking. So basically, uh, you know, we are taking steps, but still. Uh, you know, still not be able to move to that level of growth yet. So the new initiatives, our steps we are taking, we believe that actually it's possible to be able to move to a double digit growth. Yeah. Also, the Q3 is also in a way that, you know, while for us, both quarter two and quarter three are seasonal quarters, uh, because, uh, you know, quarter two are a lot of enough period. Quarter three, you know, have uh, again uh, some bit of enough period and flexible season. So both Q1, sorry, Q2 and Q3 get impacted. In terms of uh, the revenue, got it, got it, sir. And so, second question on uh, this whole uh, mitigation with Google. Just wanted to understand: uh, is the current EBITDA indicative of uh, the margins that the business is going to have, uh, assuming similar top line, or uh, there are more uh, provisions we need to do? We need to take uh, going further. No, no, I think the provision will be at uh, similar levels only. I want to on the Google litigation, as you are aware, we have appealed with the division bench and the hearing is in progress. So on mm -hmm. a best estimate basis, we have created a provision. The only difference is in quarter one, there was only for two months. In quarter two, the full provision has come. So, it, so a similar sort of provision will continue in the uh, coming quarters. Uh, therefore, we have said in the next quarter, our overall PAP uh, levels uh, 
uh, will be slightly lower than what we have achieved in the same quarter of last year. And in last year's same quarter, we had a one-time gain on the account of uh, uh, land sales. And in this coming quarter, that will not be there. Uh, despite that, we are saying it will be just slightly lower than what we had achieved in Q3. So the provisions will be very similar, uh, given that our top line is also growing at a very, uh, you know, moderate sort of a pace. I understand that. Okay. All right. So that's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and want to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Anurag Purohit from NID Portfolio Managers. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, my question is regarding revenue for this quarter because historically uh, our revenue, quarterly revenues always tends to be a percentage or two higher than the billings uh, in the previous quarter. Uh, this quarter there's a 2% decline compared to the billings of last quarter. Any particular reason for this? Uh, yeah, sometime, you know, because the billing of last quarter was 124.5, was 121. It sometimes depends on uh, you know which month of the period where sometimes the revenue are added up. So it takes here and there some some changes, but it it, uh, it also the how the package mix uh, would also add to it now. But, uh, yeah. Okay. And Shushant, uh, for uh, so PET might be uh, slightly declining in Q3 versus Q uh, uh, Q3 of last year. But how about EBITDA? Uh, would that also witness some pressure uh, versus last year, or there would be some momentum, particularly coming from the marketing spend uh, point of view? Yeah. So uh, you know, even the EBITDA, we we believe there will be a slight uh, you know decline because mainly because the Google service provision fee affects EBITDA also. Okay. There won't be any counter from uh, advertisement spend. Uh, I wanted to understand more on that, particularly because if you, from competitive intensity point of view, Jeevan Sati is now saying that there is some spite in their marketing span, but we don't see similar in matrimony's uh, marketing span. So just wanted to understand more on that, how that direction uh, would move for future. You know, thing is that on the marketing span, definitely, you know, uh, the so given charge has reduced the marketing spend in the related some other market also. So they continue to now invest in our uh, one in two market, which is uh, uh, North India and uh, West and the Maharashtra market. And definitely they reduce the marketing spend. But however, uh, uh, the other player continue to uh, know, uh, invest in marketing. Uh, also, we see the marketing spend, uh, which is sort of reduced in North and West because of overall the spend that is uh, in this category in those markets. But our there's increase in marketing spend happening in uh, other markets. So net net, uh, the, the company intention in the marketing continues to remain because by given for definitely uh, reduce the marketing spend. So if other player also reduce the marketing, uh, then definitely you also look at optimizing the marketing. That is one time because while there is a not in the reduce, uh, but other markets the marketing spend has shifted in order. But overall the level of the marketing spend remained at the more or less similar level. I'm looking at the, not on the overall basis, I'm looking at the other player also. So that way we continue to uh, you know, spend uh, in, in our point. There is some reduction compared to what we spend in quarter two, but in the around the part of a growth range on matchmaking, uh, that's all the market is spend, spend will continue. Still, uh, there is some reduction in the market is spent uh, in, you know, by industry players. <laughs> Yeah, few uh, increase it to uh, increase the marketing cost and put on account of uh, uh, we launch a new TV campaign because we also launch a new product. We launch a uh, new campaign on basis of uh, how to you know finding life on the basis of hobbies and interests. When we launch a new campaign, uh, the average uh, uh, duration is higher, uh, so that increases cost of marketing spend. So that was the reason for some increase in marketing spend actually. Okay. So essentially, Q3, there should be some respite on that front uh, compared to Q2 of this year. Yes, yeah. Okay. And wanted to understand in terms of uh, industry, uh, because um, 
you are still growing on YOY basis. Uh, Jeevan Sati's uh, revenue are kind of uh, now also uh, uh, plateaued to a, at a certain level. How about Shadi? What your what is your sense on that? Actually, honestly, we don't have any idea about because it's not a public company. We don't have any information about the other players. But definitely, given Sati, they tried with this thing. They also moved the free model and they set up companies of free tech state. They really have gone down. Uh, but however, uh, so we, we don't have any information about other players. So we continue to take steps to grow our business. And while we are not moved to average to develop growth, but again, we have to come that we are taking steps to see whether we can move to a double. Okay. Thanks, uh, and all the best, and uh, happy Diwali to you. Thanks. No, thank you so much. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and want to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Drisha from Carlelian Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening, sir. Uh, just a bookkeeping question. In case of this, I wanted to know, what is the amount of provision that we have charged uh, on account of uh, the Google uh, litigation? Yeah, see, uh, due to the sensitivity involved, we are not disclosing any specific numbers. All we have said is that on a best estimate basis, we have provided because Google has, you know, certain tiers and all of that and where we fall in. So it's not a very straightforward uh, thing. But broadly, you know, the way we see is that if not for the provision in this quarter, our uh, PAT margins would have been at least maybe 300 basis points better than what it's Okay. Okay. And so by when do we have the next hearing or when is the resolution expected on this front? See, we don't know. It all depends on, uh, you know, how the court deals with it. Uh, currently, the court is in the, in the midst of this, and we don't know. It has to, you know, they progress. Uh, you know, they don't give us the case in advance, so we have to wait for it. And also, in parallel, uh, the case is also lying with the CCI as well. So that also needs to be a uh, to progress. So uh, it, it will, I think this will all take some time as we go along. We need to wait and monitor. Okay. Also, uh, like you alluded also in the previous questions that, you know, uh, the, you know, the growth has been uh, slightly, you know, expecting, uh, you know, moderation in billing. So even like, you know, the total number of billings has remained very sticky between, you know, point uh, like 22 to 26. So uh, what has really led to this stickiness and, you know, despite our putting in so much of uh, effort in advertising and all, we do not really see this billing or number of subscriptions going up. So is it uh, due to, you know, any, uh, we losing any market share or what is it that is, uh, you know, uh, basically not leading to the growth, expected growth? Well, basically, uh, 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 while we are taking steps to, you know, do the better growth and, uh, yeah, and we are definitely putting our efforts, taking initiatives, but definitely growth is around the time. That's because this category, uh, there are, within our business, there are multiple, uh, uh, service, uh, big online matchmaking, personal service, uh, we also had a jewelry. So, uh, so but, but there are some challenges as well. There are some segments, uh, some markets, the profile growth is not happening. So, the combination of multiple uh, factors uh, uh, not helping us to move to the WD growth. However, the good thing that, you know, we are the one player, continue to grow, continue to move up, while one is continuing to make a profit. Well, the end of year is to dry growth, but there are challenges there. As I said, uh, uh, it's a you know, part of the market. Well, we are definitely working on it, definitely taking steps now. So unlike other businesses, the matching business also have a, uh, the set of specific issue because every year we have a new set of customers and uh, you know we have to convert them to the page users. And that gives us some segment, we are not seeing some growth also. So yes, uh, so definitely the business is like, uh, unlike other SaaS business, there is some case and we can continue to add to the base. So, uh, it's, it's a more of people get married. So we're also taking steps like loud.com and other initiatives. We hope these, all these initiatives are still progress to move to the number two growth. And uh, that's on the growth. And the Google issue, again, if you want to elaborate it, yeah, it's a, it's a multiple forum, taking time, and uh, definitely we thought they would increase the profit, but this has come and up with our profit. So yeah, as Susan said, 
Take me this time, and we don't know how long it's going to take to manage this. Why? Our company is a party. We hope we'll be able to overcome. Um, I don't know when. I uh, will Google a lot to do everything possible to get this revenue from players. Sure, sure. Thank you so much, sir. That's all for my side. Thank you. Before we take the next question. Participants who wish to ask questions may press star and want to ask the question. The next question is from the line of Pulkit Singhal from Dalmas Capital Management. Please go ahead. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. Um, the first question is on this uh, Google issue. As a management, have we experimented in any micro market that if we uh, take the users to a different page for payment? Does that affect the user behavior? We can always segment the market in a small city and try it out. So, have we done that? Uh, it, yeah, it's something I'm not tried yet. Uh, because most of the payments in India happen in UPI. So, we are not sure, you know, because also most of the users in India are app users, almost 80 percent. So, taking them outside of because app in India to go to website. So, we are not done that. But definitely, you know, something we have to figure it out. We have to work out beyond that case. We also need to figure out. Uh, this extreme and see what kind of impact will have now. But scope and scope to are done yet. We have not done that yet. So is, you've not done that, but is that something you're willing to experiment and, and planning to experiment? No, no, definitely no, because obviously you don't want to, you know, kind of give hard and money to Google. Right? Definitely Google is abusing the monopoly. That's why that's thing we're fighting. And uh, you know, just forcing people to pay or you know, part. Uh, the revenue is that you know it's a taxing company. So I'm be very vocal about the Google, uh, you know, taking the hard earned money of Indian company, or you want to take the money outside of India as well. So the government also losing revenue on tax as well. So we're fighting, we're educating and you know, highlighting the issue. Probably we'll be taking, you know, various steps to see whether how to overcome this challenge. That's a good thing in the business model. You can actually experiment based on micro markets, based on small, you know, different yeah, yeah. segments, different apps, and 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 therefore see. I mean, uh, and and it will be a big thing because then you can roll it out and and then you know mitigate these costs. Absolutely, we are not uh, saying that we definitely will experiment. So, so far, because we lost till recently, we are busy with launching a new version of uh, Matumi.com. So we have to look at what are the various experiments. What will help us to continue our this revenue and at the same time are able to overcome the challenge either uh, legally or otherwise also. Okay. We'll experiment up and we'll experiment. Hello? Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was saying that the app has been refreshed uh, and there's certain update. Yeah. We launched the app and, uh, you know, you made the marketing spends. Now, this has happened, I think, uh, two weeks ago and as well as one month ago uh, when I look at at least the uh, iPhone app store. Um, how, how has user, user behavior or engagement changed post that? Are you seeing any, uh, any, uh, any uptick in engagement at least? I mean, is what I was trying to understand. So oh, that is the truth. So it's not clear in this thing. So through launching new version of app, definitely it's, it's much better. But still, there are some uh, like, uh, teething issues which are working on and addressing it. It may take another couple of weeks for us to set all the customer base and the customer feedback, fixing some more things. Because it's a complete revamp. So it's not an incremental change is what you have done. So, so for us, it's well you launched a uh, few weeks ago, but still there are uh, the areas you need to improve, or there are sections you need to modify. So working on it. Maybe maybe one month down the line, probably would have moved to a much better level. We definitely see also when we launch a complete new version, it takes some time for user to get adapted to the new version. So now we think that there is a you know improved traction and, and uh, increased engagement. And also one more point is that when we launch a new version, it also takes time for user to download the the new version. It's not that all the users are migrated to the the new version of uh, our app. It does also take over a period of time. So we believe that probably uh, you know one month down the line, uh, we'd have also had some other you know that, 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 that small small issues, and also we expect uh, at that time a majority of users have downloaded the new version of the app. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Anders, got it. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. We would like to remind participants that you may press star and want to ask questions. As there are no further questions from the participants, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Abhishek uh, Banerjee, and uh, thanks once again everyone for joining the call. Once again, wishing you all a very happy and prosperous Diwali. So look forward to seeing you time. Thank you so much. Thanks. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may not disconnect your lines.